Greetings everyone, Bear Tracker Nature Films here. And did you know that tracking is about more than just footprints? What else can trackers use to tell them that animals have been present in an area? We call that sign. And sign can be any other clue that an animal was out in the forest, or the beach, or wherever you are. So what kinds of signs do I look for in this type of environment? Let's go find out. So what you notice about this log is it's got some opened acorns on the top of it and a bunch of pieces from that acorn scattered all over. Can you hear the J in the background? There you go. The placement on top of a log indicates that this was carried here because it's uh, actually the first day of February and acorns are not falling off the trees right now. They've been stored for the winter. Um, so if you look at this, some of the parts here, you can see dirt on them. So this acorn had been buried at one point. Note the dirt coating on it. There's several acorns here, I think. Um, so that means that it was dug up and brought to this log to be opened. And that's the behavior of a squirrel. Um, we have gray squirrels, flying squirrels, Douglas squirrels, and chipmunks around here. Um, in this particular area of the forest, the ones that I see most are the gray squirrels. Chipmunks being pretty rare right around here. So that would rule out a couple of species. Um, and normally the flying squirrels don't do this kind of behavior. This is the behavior really of a gray squirrel, which digs holes in the fall buries the acorns. Oh listen, he's imitating. Did you hear that? Sorry to interrupt, but that, that uh, Stellar's Jay was just imitating a hawk call. Um, anyway, so the behavior of the gray squirrel is that they, they dig holes, bury their acorns, and then they retrieve them throughout the winter to eat. And there's a lot of sign here that a squirrel fed upon this. Number one, it's on top of a log. The other species that does that is birds, like the jay you can hear in the background there. But they don't usually dig up acorns, bring them to logs, and then feed on them. Jays usually find them in the forest and bring them to logs where they pound them open, use the log as an anvil to open them, and then uh, feed on them. So this was most likely done by a gray squirrel. And we can look closer at these acorns and see if there's any tooth marks. So note right here, you can see some incisor marks on the edge of the acorn right here, those paired marks. Those are the incisors of a squirrel um, that were used to open up this acorn. And up close, you can see the dirt that's all over this acorn from it having been previously buried. And yeah, that jay in the background is imitating a hawk. Kind of interesting just to listen to him. <laughs> So here's some more marks on the edge, and again it looks like some scratch marks here. Same thing here, looking at the edge. You can see some paired incisor marks right there. So this was opened by a gray squirrel, and usually they'll hold them kind of by the ends like this, and sort of twist them around and peel parts off of them, and then they'll feed on that. And they do it on top of a log because that gives them a perch, a place to um, mine their surroundings at the same time so that a, a predator doesn't approach them or, or maybe a hawk like this jay is imitating over here, approach them. So speaking of the jay over there, since we're here, um, one of their behaviors is to mimic other birds. And that particular call that he's mimicking is that of a hawk. I think it might be a red-shouldered hawk that he's imitating. But anyway, they, they will mimic other birds' calls, and they're really good at it. Um, I can tell this is a jay because he's also using jay calls in between. But um, the Stellar's jay is well known for its ability to mimic the calls of other birds. So that's what we're hearing in the background, is that chattery little jay uh, imitating a hawk. Sometimes they'll um, approach other birds mim mimicking that sound and scare them off. Um, just thought that was kind of an interesting little point to point out since he's being so vocal while I'm doing this video. 
So this kind of goes along with the gray squirrel I showed you a moment ago. And uh, note the diggings here in the forest duff. And uh, inside this one, there's actually still an acorn. And for whatever reason, the squirrel dug it up but didn't feed on it. So maybe it got disturbed before it could dig it up. Or the acorn rotted over the winter and isn't particularly edible. And the squirrel rejected it. So either way, that acorn is still in the hole where the squirrel left it. But so the squirrels are really good at finding these things. They bury them in the winter time. I mean, uh, in the fall, and dig them out, dig them up throughout the winter to feed on them. And they remember where they put all these things. I don't know how they do it. They must memorize nearby lo uh, landmarks or something. But you will find these digs like this wherever they pull up the acorns that they've buried. Sometimes they'll feed on it right there at the hole, and sometimes not. Sometimes they'll they'll get disturbed, or maybe the acorn is no good, and uh, they leave it. But that's what this sign looks like. This is the digging of a western gray squirrel retrieving its cache of acorns. Uh, western gray squirrels are scatter hoarders, which means basically they scatter these around all over. So if you look out here, this is all oak woodlands. There's a... Uh, a few pines in here, Monterey pines, but mostly this is tan oak. And all throughout this this forest, squirrels will scatter their caches, each one having one single acorn in it. And that's called a scatter hoarder. There's also larger hoarders. And what they do is they take a whole bunch of acorns or pine cones or whatever they're, they're stashing for the winter, and they will place it in one place. That's more like the behavior of a Douglas squirrel, which usually puts their a whole bunch of cones in one storage location. So the strategy has its advantages. The larder hoarder has a whole bunch right in one place. The scatter hoarder, their uh, their stashes are all over the place. And uh, if a um, another animal is going to come and raid their stash, they would have a harder time finding all of them. Whereas with your larder hoarder, if a, an animal comes to raid it, they're going to find all of them at once. So they have to. The larder hoarders have to make several storage locations where they keep their nuts or cones or whatever it is that they're storing. So continuing on with our story of the western gray squirrels. This uh, redwood tree, and uh, this is actually located about, I'd say, six feet from the ground. So the uh, shredded bark right here also tells part of the story of the western gray squirrel. And what they do is they come along and take the bark from the redwood trees, particularly the smaller diameter uh, saplings, and they shred it, because it's very, it is a very fibrous bark, it's easy to shred. And then they ball it up, carry it in their mouth, and take it to their nest and use it as insulation. So this shredded appearance right here is due to a squirrel gathering this for nesting material. Um, look at this one right here also. Um, there's still some shreds clinging to the trunk, um, but you can also see that most of the bark on that dead sapling has been removed. And it's done by peeling, and redwood bark itself is very, comes in very long fiber, so it's pretty easy to peel it. Um, you can see the tree behind it, and how fibrous looking that bark is. So uh, this is also um, a sign of our friend the western gray squirrel. This is just a nest gathering, nest material gathering sign. So they will do this most of the winter. They'll just keep adding to their nest uh, because as it gets colder and colder, they want more insulation. Redwood bark itself is quite good at providing insulation because it can be uh, mashed together. The little shreds can be mashed together and they retain air spaces in between them, which helps to keep the squirrels warm. So this is another sign that you can find um, in a mixed forest. In this case, this is a mixed forest of redwood, tan oak, Douglas fir. So here's some of that fibrous bark that I was mentioning before. It's really flexible and stringy. And you could see how an animal could take this stuff and fluff it up and take it like that, carry it out over, over to a tree and add it to their nest. This, in fact, was gathered by a squirrel and was left on the ground. It's since then been scent marked by a fox, and I think that's why the squirrel has left it here all winter. Um, 
This has been sitting here for a while, although the squirrel did jump back and take some of it. Most of it has been left here on the ground, and I think that's just due to the scent marking of another animal. So animals do communicate, they use scent, um, but I thought I'd show you what the really stringy bark looks like and why it's such great nest material. Here's a raised lump of dirt in the forest. Kind of stands up from the surrounding landscape a little bit. And on top of it, we find bits and pieces of mushroom scattered around. And the mushroom that was fed on right here. Who did this? So up close here, note that these look like gouge marks made by the paired incisors of a rodent. Especially having it over here. Right here you can see them pretty well and in here. So this was also the feeding sign of a western gray squirrel. Right here it looks a little more scalloped and that might be feeding sign from a slug but hard to tell. Could be. But I think the rest of this was done by a squirrel because you can see the the uh, paired incisor marks in there that indicate it was done by a rodent. And also the placement where it was found on top of that uh, raised area in the forest indicates oops, also a rodent. Uh, squirrels like to use a, a perch like this to feed and these are the little curly cues of uh, mushroom material that were peeled off it and discarded probably the outsides that it didn't want to eat um, and there are just little bits and pieces of mushroom all over scattered around here where the squirrel's been feeding. So this is again a feeding sign of probably the western gray squirrel who uses just random perches. They don't use a single perch and come back to it over and over like your Douglas squirrel does. So it's a very common sign uh, of them feeding on mushrooms. I hope you've enjoyed this tour of wildlife signs found in a forested environment. And now you know that tracking is not just about looking at footprints, it's about looking at all the signs out here that tell you animals are around. It's about looking at really small clues that tell very big stories. So even though everything we've looked at has been very minuscule, tiny signs here and there scattered throughout the forest, Overall, uh, the, it builds a picture. It tells you the story of the life of the animals that live here and how they survive, how they build their shelters, what they feed on, how they feed on it, how they survive the winter, and more. So that's what tracking is all about. It's about telling a story and reading what's out there on the landscape. So you can read landscape level clues, you can read tiny little macro clues, but all of it builds together, it builds a picture and it tells you all about the wildlife that share the woods with us. Hope you've enjoyed.